Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to see why there's safety in numbers as we start looking at games with more than just two strategies per player. Here's the game that we're looking at today. Two generals have five units or troops. They simultaneously decide how many units they should allocate to an upcoming battle. Or either side can unilaterally opt out of this battle by electing to pass instead. The side with more units of the battle wins. If they have the same amount, or at least one, one side decides not to play, then the game ends in a draw. And that gives you this matrix. Note that the payoffs are 0, 0 if either player passes, or they both bring the same number of troops. Meanwhile, the side with more units than the other gets one point, while the side with fewer loses a point. The question then becomes how to solve a game with as many outcomes as this one. Fortunately, the solution concept is very simple. We are still going to be looking at best responses as we did in the stag hunt game, except we're going to be doing it on a much larger scale now. First, let's review what a best response is. Given what all their players are doing, a strategy is a best response if and only if a player cannot gain more utility from switching to a different strategy. And a game is said to be in Nash equilibrium if and only if all players are playing best responses to what the other player is doing. So in the case of a two-player game, you're looking for a mutual best response, where both players are playing uh, two best responses, best response to a best response. And it's just going to grow increasingly more complicated as you add players. So for three players, we are looking for three strategies from three different players that are all best responses to each other and so forth. And you just got to keep adding on to that for however many number of players there are. Now, fortunately, this won't be too complicated because we're only looking at two players. So let's start relating all I just said back to the game that we were looking at. To start, suppose player two was going to use all five of her units. You can see that player one earns zero points if he brings five as well, or he passes, while he loses a point if he brings one, two, three, or four units. As such, he has two best responses here, pass and five. This is because all the other moves from player one will produce a strictly worse outcome of a negative one, than had he gone with pass or five, which would have produced zero instead. Now, because this game is so big, we're gonna be using stars to mark these best responses just to keep track of them. So pass and five get stars here for player one if player two is playing five. Let's uh, go to four now. If player one passes or plays four, he gets zero. If he brings one, two, or three units, he gets negative one. But if he brings five, he'll get one point. So one is the highest payoff we see here, and as such, player one only has best, one best response, and that's to play five. So that's gonna get a star. And that's just because one is more than zero or negative one. So it's the highest payoff available there if player two is playing four. That's all that we're doing here. We're just doing this process over and over and over again for all the strategies available. Now let's try three. It looks like player one will be most satisfied if he brings four or five as that will produce one, whereas the other two are, or rather the other four strategies are producing payoffs of either zero or negative one. So the highest payoffs gets the stars, and that's going to be four and five right there, two stars. Now for two. Player one gets the most now by playing three, four, or five, so those are going to get stars. And for one, player one gets the most by choosing two, three, four, or five. Basically all we're seeing here is that if a battle is going to happen, you want to make sure that you have more troops than the opposing army. There's really nothing more to it than that. Finally, you'll notice something interesting if player 2 passes. Now there won't be a battle at all, so it doesn't matter what player 1 picks. Consequently, all of these strategies are best responses because they all produce the same outcome. And there is no worse outcome. And they're all getting stars, just like that. And if we put all these back together, we get this matrix. That took care of everything for player 1. Now all we have to do is do the same process for player 2. So if player 1 is playing 5, player 2's best responses are to pass or play 5 herself because 0 is better than negative 1. So those two now get stars for player 2. Here let's try to do 1 through 4 quickly. If player 1 is bringing some number of units other than 5, player 2's best response is to bring any number more than that. So in the case of player 1 bringing 4, player 2 gets 1 point for bringing 5, and so 5 is going to get the star for her. And for 3, 4 or 5 works for player 2. And for 2, now 3, 4, or 5 works. And finally for 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 will now work. And like we saw for player 1, player 2 doesn't care what she does if player 1 is going to pass. So those are all going to get stars as well. Now all we need to do is bring all this information back together, which gives us this completed matrix with the best responses marked. 
If you remember what I said earlier, a Nash equilibrium is when both players are playing best responses to what the other one is doing. So we're looking for these mutual best responses, like I said. And we've already done all the work necessary to find these Nash equilibria, as we've marked all the best strategies available, best responses rather, available to each player. All we have to do is find the best responses that are now mutual best responses. In other words, we need to find which cells have stars in uh, stars on the payoffs for both of those players. And there are actually four of these, which means there are four Nash equilibria: pass, pass, pass five, five pass, and five five. These are the only four outcomes that have stars for both players in the particular cell. The rest of them might have stars, which means they are best responses for one player, but they're not mutual best responses. Another player, the other player rather, has incentive to deviate from the strategy he's currently playing. Whereas in the four listed right here, pass, 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 five, five, pass, and five, five, neither side has incentive to deviate, and that's what makes it a Nash equilibrium. So what does this all mean? Well, if you've ever heard the expression, go big or go home, it definitely applies to games with this structure. You either want to max out on your capabilities to guarantee at least a draw, if not a win, or you want to just play, you just don't want to play the game at all, you want to pass, which will guarantee you a draw. Now this game has all sorts of applications, from serious stuff like war, to fun stuff like poker or the video game League of Legends. If you look hard enough, I'm sure you'll find some applications for this game to your life as well.